think the biggest challenges on the horizon are the combination of the increased expectation from customers and the increased competition for direct customer relationships. There's a scarcity of time that people have and attention that they can really invest into brand relationships, but brands are finding themselves more and more disintermediated by technology platforms or in other places. And so really the only option for them to continue to survive and to prosper is to get a direct connection with a customer, but it's increasingly challenging both because the customer wants more out of that relationship and and because there's someone else that's there to offer that to them. So if the number one challenge is really meeting and then exceeding the ever increasing expectations from customers, what we think it takes is to have the right technology and tools in place, to have the right data infrastructure in place so that you can understand people, you've got a clean, real-time understanding of what's going on in the world and what's going on with the individuals you're trying to communicate with, and then also the teams that are there to get maximum ROI out of the technology and the data ecosystem that you've built. And that when you can kind of bring all that together in one ecosystem that you can drive great results. So we are a data and analytics company, but data actually is one of the biggest problems out there. There's not a shortage or dearth of data. In fact, there's more data that you could look at than ever before, and it's growing at an exponential rate. So the problem isn't data, the problem is really answers. How do I get the right answers to the core questions about how I can reach my customers, how we can make sure that they resonate with my core messaging, my core content, my core branding, and then how can I turn that into something that I can repeat again and again and again? The biggest path forward I see to overcoming those challenges is um, applying machine learning. Uh, so what machine learning has the capability to do for this industry is really take that vast amount of data that they have and unearth the regular patterns that you're going to find with that data to then show them, hey, this is a pattern that is actually working. We think that it's uh, repeatable in this way, shape, or form, and here's how you can actually work with that time and time again. We have an industry now that is emerging, and we have an industry that we're used to. The banking industry, the financial services industry has been around for a long time. It's very binary. You have the password or you don't. You, they know you or they don't. You have an SMS code or you don't. In this new world, things are much more about managing risk. In order to manage risk, you have to have other parameters. You can't just be reliant on a phone or a password or any of that kind of stuff. So therefore, knowing how someone behaves and employing or deploying behavioral biometrics in a financial institution or e-commerce or a credit card company is really important because otherwise you have really no sure way of authenticating somebody as to who they are. The hurdle is getting all the existing population of tech, tech technology and mindset to embrace this. So financial institutions need to come to grips with the fact that behavior is a layer of defense that they haven't used before. And it's also a layer of opportunity by which they can actually enhance customer service and give a digital experience that's very meaningful.